welcome to another video on the Windows command line. We've looked at moving up and down the hierarchy in previous videos and for this video I would like to introduce you to some commands that are not used that frequently but they are good tools to use. The first tool is attribute. If you're following along with me, I would like for you to type in attrib forward slash question mark. So this gives us the help page. So each file has one or more attributes. For instance, some are archived files and some are system files, some are even hidden files. You'll want to go through and take a look at this and familiarize yourself with this because this will be a handy tool for you to use to get some information about specific files and the more information that you can gather as you're planning your reconnaissance phase for penetration testing the better off you'll be. What I'd like to do is um, I'm gonna run the tree command and the tree command just builds a hierarchy so let's take a look at that and you can see we start from the C we go down to test which is here on the desktop we go into subtest which is right here we also have a test folder there and uh, and inside the test folder we have results and inside results there's nothing there so the tree command gives us a visual of the way that the folders are laid out our directories so I'm going to navigate into test so I'm going to use the change directory test and remember uh, tab is your best friend for this if you run tab it's going to give you what's there in alphabetical order the more times that you press tab until you finally find what you need this is going to come in handy in just a moment when we start looking at file names that have white space in the names themselves so keep that in mind. I'm going to move over into the test and I'm going to take a look. I have cleared the screen and I am now going to go into the test file and see what's there. I'm going to run dir and I can see in this folder I have a file. I also have the subtest and the test directories. We see the files that are there and I want to do an attribute about the dir file. So I'm going to run attribute and I'm going to type in dir and use the tab key for the autocomplete. Now I can see that this file is located here in the path and I can also see that it has attribute of A. So if you recall when we ran the attribute we found out that A is an archive file. So that file itself is a, an archive. So that's how attribute works. Pretty simple tool, but it will give you information and, and sometimes a lot of information on a file very quickly. I'm going to navigate a couple layers here. I'm at the users directory. I'm going to navigate into my SEC 504 and I'm going to run tree again and so you can see now that by going up a level from where we ran it last time we ran it from the desktop level and we got these results by running it at this level you can see all of the documents all of the uh, directories and then down into the individual files and folders you can see some of my pen testing software there so so that again is what the tree does now let's run a path and let's take a look at what path does so this displays or sets 
a search path for executable files. And there are different ways that you can set it. You uh, just simply type path and this will clear all search path settings and direct the command line to search only in the current directory. Or you can type path without any other parameters to display the current path that you're on. Uh, including the path setting causes the old path to be amended to the new path setting. So by using that path you can reestablish parameters and choose the areas that you want to be searched with your query. So that is path, a good, uh, good tool. Also performance monitor. Now when we run this command it's actually going to open up the monitor and uh, it's going to give us the information of what's happening in real time. You can actually scroll over and take a look at all of this information over here if you're interested in that. But most people will zero right in on the open resource monitor. So this is really where the meat and potatoes are, the information that you're looking for. You can choose different views for your, uh, your displays over here. You can also look at all the displays as they are uh, extended so that you can actually see which ones and you can zero in on specific ones and take a look at what they're doing. Then you can also, you're in the overview here, you can also go into a, just a CPU view, memory, disk, or network. Uh, most people will keep it in overview so that they can quickly go down and take a look. But you can also uh, collapse these as well. If you needed a little bit more room here, you could certainly do that and then pick out whatever you needed here and get information about it. Analyze it or search online for what type of process it is. So I'll close out of the performance monitor. Something else I'd like to take a look at is the driver query. So I'll clear the screen with a CLS and I'm going to type in driver query and this is going to give me a list of all of my drivers. Now this is good information to have as well because not only does it give you the, the module name and the display name, but it gives you the driver type, what they're associated with, kernel or file system or what have you. But it also gives link and date as well in here. So good information there. Also along these lines, as you probably remember from other videos, if we were to go into, let's say, the desktop, and run this command again, then what I could do is I could actually export that to maybe a file called driver.txt and I could just save that right here on my desktop. Then if I ran type, I could easily see what's inside the file. It would show up right here. Or if I opened driver.txt, then it would actually open up in Notepad. Good information there. Um, easy commands, fast commands that will help you out. Also, we talked a little bit about the IP config, and I want to run an all. And the all portion of this just kind of breaks it up into individual devices. And the reason I wanted to break this up is there is information for each individual item here. You've got the Windows IP configuration. We have our Ethernet adapter configuration which is right here. You can also see the physical address which is also called the MAC address and we'll pull that in a moment and we'll also see what kind of device that is. I'll show you how to do that. The Ether adapter MPCAP loopback. We have NetBIOS over TCP IP enabled on that particular loopback. We have tunnel adapter. 
and then we have another tunnel adapter. I want to take a look at the MAC addresses so I know that there is a MAC address here and I know that there is a MAC address right here so let's take a look at a quick way to run that let's just get MAC and it's going to open up and we'll see that there are in fact two MAC addresses there I'm going to open this window up a little bit so that we can see the other part of the window so you can see that this is the MAC address here and if I scroll up you can see that that MAC address corresponds to this one now if you're not sure about what MAC addresses do their actual physical locations for the device the first three letters or sections here are the manufacturer of the device and then the last three are the device identification if we go over to my website warrenoffer.com and we scroll down to MAC address which is under the research section and we open that up there's actually a MAC lookup website here so if I move this over a little bit where I can see this then I'm going to type in 080027 and I'm going to go ahead and run that against that and we'll scroll down and see what it is so we can see that this is a manufacturer this is the first three parts of the MAC number and it belongs to PCS System Technique in Germany so it's a German company and then the last three parts of that correspond to the actual piece of equipment also on this website it gives you a little bit of information here that we've talked about and how those octets and things like that are are listed out but it also gives you a way by going to ipconfig slash all and there is a space in between there that is a space and then also finding it on Unix or Linux and on uh, Mac OS as well so those are some good tools the last thing that I would like to look at is I would like to create a directory and we know that we can use the make directory and we're going to name this directory file one and we're going to write it like file one that's going to be it if I go ahead and I hit return right now something strange happened I got a file and I got a one well that is because of white space so white space is a negative space that is taken up in your individual file names and it can be an entire path but the way that we deal with that here uh, at the file level we just use the uh, quotation marks so if we do that and we hit enter then what we end up with here is file one so pretty neat we'll still have to go back and delete these two files and uh, and take those away but we have a file now here um, a couple of other things that we dealt with in other lessons but let's touch on right here if I just look at the directory of test then there is actually a file in there there's a subtest and there's a test I would like to delete all of these at once and there's a way that we can do that now we can remove directory as a command and if we do remove directory and we just use test it's going to tell us that there are things in that directory so we can't do that however if we do a forward slash with an s we're going to force it to delete everything that's in there and then we run the test it's going to say are you sure you want to do this I'll say yes and there we go it takes it away